I love cheap motorcycles. I've spent countless hours scrolling on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for basically anything that has a title and isn't completely destroyed for under a few thousand dollars. I found a number of cheap motorcycles that have served me well after some hours of wrenching. But this bike found me. My friend had it for years, mostly sat outside under a tarp. The rear brake didn't work, the suspension was soft, and all the plastics are basically shot. I've stripped away almost everything. So now, what am I left with? BMW, the ultimate riding machine. The BMW K100 was born as a touring bike with the big engine, optional fairings and hard bags, and reliability that makes even Honda fans swoon. But after all that waxing poetic, the history, the weird engine, is this bike actually any good? Well, let's get the flaws out of the way. The kickstand sucks. It was, and continues to be, heavy at 536 pounds, and it features some bizarre workarounds that range from unique to car-like. The mass airflow sensor is enormous because it came from a car. The front brakes are adequate by 1980 standards due to the strange plumbing setup, and the wheelbase is downright American at almost six feet. In a shocking oversight, the RS trim bangs its handlebars against the tank, which is one reason I had to put risers on this bike. Additionally, for my six foot frame, the handlebars were in a prime position to cause substantial shoulder and wrist pain for any ride lasting longer than an hour. But while this bike may be a bit of a plonker, it's impressively athletic. Low speed parking lot maneuvers are a breeze with all the weight down low. With its length and weight, it's certainly not flickable, but it does feel extremely stable at speed. Unfortunately, this bike only has five gears, and they are long. Strangely enough, fifth gear feels like it should be longer. Cruising on the freeway will keep you around 5,000 RPM on this bike, which not only feels a little bit silly considering the size of this engine, it also doesn't help this bike's poor fuel economy of around 38 mpg in the real world. So it's a good thing they decided to give this bike almost six gallons of fuel so you're not constantly hunting for gas stations on a long trip. Which is great news, because that's what this bike is best at. The poor gas mileage is certainly a negative, but that's the price you pay for one of the first fuel-injected bikes in its gutsy 1000cc engine. This bike just gives you unfussy acceleration whenever you feel like it. <laughs> really terrific engine. Freeway on-ramps and the like really let you stretch the legs and feels a lot more comfortable than it should the kind of speed that it can do. There's always passing power on tap when you need it to, which is lovely to have, especially if you live in a big city. Woo! Feels remarkably smooth, even at, you know, freeway speeds. And you'd be surprised how much more power there is left on tap if you need to pass or avoid some kind of stupid driver. Honestly, the highlight of this bike is the engine. And things that are weird when you're going low speeds, like a long wheelbase and heavy weight, make it an excellent mile muncher when you're just crunching miles on the freeway. This bike feels way more stable than it has any right to, especially for something that's so old. So where does that leave us? In the end, this bike shows its age, and there's no getting around that. It's big, heavy, long, and not exceptionally quick by today's standards. It's a quirky, old bike that feels half genius and half parts bin, but it's an exceptionally well-built machine with legendary reliability and more personality than the average TikTok influencer. If nothing else, it's a slice of the 80s without all the mechanical issues. For all of its quirks, it's everything I need and easy to keep running. Sometimes old and brilliant is better than cheap and new. Sometimes imperfections make a thing more human. Sometimes enough is enough.